Hey, good afternoon. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art, and we're going to paint teeny tiny today. Look at these little teeny canvases. These come in little packs of four. They also come in little black canvases. You can also buy little tiny, teeny easels as well to put them on. So I just thought it would be fun to do some ocean scenes. I'm here at the beach and the waves have been incredible. And so, um, hey, Mary Ann, thanks for popping in. So if you want to watch over my shoulder as I paint these, I'm going to probably do four all at once. They're so teeny. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to paint exactly on them, but I'll turn the camera over and we will see what we come up with. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, I'm going to just kind of freehand these. I'm going to kind of play around. I have some photos here that of beachy things that I've painted. And I'm just going to do skies and water. And then we can add maybe a lighthouse or with my skies. And I'm going to use my tinier brushes for this um, little tiny project. So we don't need those big brushes that I paint a lot of times with. And I do do my skies pretty much always the same way. On my big canvases are little. I just take a little blue into some white. And since these are little gallery wrapped canvases, we will paint the edges of them, finish them off that way. Of course, we're not going to put them in teeny tiny frames. And I thought I would do this just to get that taken care of, just the, where the sky is going to go. And then as I do water and whatnot, we can paint the sides of the bottoms too. And it's and like I said, I bought these quite a while ago with all intentions of running home and painting them like we do with our craft and art supplies, but they have been sitting on the shelf for quite some time. I know they're going to only take a little bit of time, so I don't know why I didn't sit down to paint them until now. I may even try one as a little uh, nighttime, a little nighttime uh, ocean scene for the heck of it, one of the little black ones. Lots of times when I paint, especially if I'm plein air painting, I base coat all my canvases in red. Sounds kind of odd, but I really like the way the colors pop on that. So sometimes I like to have a, a background painted in a color already. And we'll just get some skies from these guys. Actually, I, I went and did a sky there kind of light, but we're going to make that a little darker on the nighttime scene. And, okay, so skies. We don't need clouds on that one, but we're going to do clouds on this one. I don't know if you saw my little demo on clouds on the page here. Give it a little horizon line, maybe. Some could be a little bit more ocean and less sky. We'll do that on these. Again, I have no rhyme or reason. I'm not sure what I'm doing on these yet. I'm just going to play around with them. And I'm just using my regular acrylics, my water-based acrylics craft paints. We can use the bottles or the tubes. And I am using just little synthetic acrylic brushes. And what I'm doing is just getting a background. Sometimes you have to work at it a little bit to fill in the little texture and, and crevices from the canvas. I do love that texture though, especially if I have a base coat and I'm going over it and doing something sort of dry brushed, you see that texture, that canvas. Now, even though these are teeny tiny, you can use some of these same principles on your skies. You can take, and because it's wet and we have time to work, you can darken some areas if you want to. You know, you could have it a little darker on the top. And if you work fairly quickly while the paint's wet on wet, you can blend it as you go. Had the paint dried and I decided to go back with that dark, it would be a different story. Sometimes you just might want a darker sky altogether. You can just brush that on a little bit. And clouds, I like to start clouds when my sky is still wet. So let me just get these guys painted for their skies. And we do have a little time. The paint's not gonna dry that fast. This way I can give you a little demonstration on teeny, tiny, 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 teeny clouds. These would be great little Christmas gifts. You could paint a bunch up at once. I just got them at Michael's in the little packs. They were uh, the Michael's brand, Artist Loft, and they came in little packs of four and then a little packs of four of the easels. And I believe the easels may have come in a light color too. I'm not exactly sure, but okay. So we have four little skies there. They're all pretty wet. And I'm going to just use the same brush. Again, you can switch brushes if you feel more comfortable. And to make clouds, I just take a little white on the corner of my brush there tap some of it off. You don't want that much on there. And I make my clouds sort of the same. Um, I do a little half bubble shape, a couple little bubble shapes off of there. 
they're not showing up hardly at all because of the wet paint underneath and that's what I want for the first coat. This is just sort of telling me where I might want some clouds later on. It's gonna blend right in, but it's gonna give me a guide later. I'm just getting some little, very light, subtle, almost not there clouds in at the moment. And I do tend to, like I said, do my clouds. I sort of start out straight, make a couple little bubbles and end up straight. And I do like to blend the bottoms into the background. So I don't mind a crisp line across the top, but I do like to blend those bottoms a bit. Sometimes you can have something is, is just streaked in like some clouds like that. Look at that's hardly anything and that works for those skies sometimes on a, a calmer day and you've just got a little white. You could leave it just blue if you wanted. You can do whatever you wish. I might put some little clouds just sort of in the background there and, and put some when it dries a little closer up. And for fun, I, I want to try one as a night sky. So let's just do the dark on this one. And then we'll spatter on, I'll show you how you can spatter on little stars. So that's just gonna be an evening sky. You could even put a moon in there and put the reflection in the water. These are so fun. They're a great way to just experiment with things you might have in mind. I'm gonna move that down so I, I want you guys to be able to see. Okay, so we've got our skies. Water, I jump right into the water next because I'm using blue again and I have the brush with blue so I don't have to rinse it yet. I'm using just primary colors basically here. I've got some uh, thalo blue, thalo green. These two mixed together make a fabulous ocean color. It's very dark on my palette, it's hard to tell. You can see it is a nice color there. But what I do is I put it on the canvas and, and another little way to, to check the color is just put it on the side to start. See if you like it. You can always lighten it or darken it from there, add more blue or green. I just sort of take equal parts of those colors doesn't look like much yet, but when we add some little white caps in there and some lighter uh, and some white to blend it, those colors will really pop out. So this is a very green ocean. So what I would do is just take a little bit more on the blue uh, as I go. And you can just really just add blue or green as you go. And now's the time as I take a little white on the brush. And this is the fun part. You can really just get some little streaks in there. You can get some lighter, darker areas. I'm painting pretty much straight back and forth, which I never do too much um, when I'm doing landscapes, uh, grasses or clouds, I mean skies, but with water, I do you tend to go back and forth. I think I'll put a little wave down in the middle here. So I'm gonna leave that, maybe just a tiny bit of blue up here. If you want a nice Caribbean colored water though, this is more like New England and Maine, you could certainly just add a little more green and white and you get that light turquoisey water, which is kind of cool. Okay, I'm gonna put some of them with sand. So let me get a little ocean water here, but I'm gonna leave some area for sand at the very bottom. And I can even go up a little higher so I have more room for the sand there get my edges done because that way I don't have to come back and do it later because I probably wouldn't. And just very simple, just putting that on there. Oh, this okay, this is gonna be all ocean. Never mind people, we are going to put sand on this guy since I went and did it with the, the blue-green mixture. Okay. Just as simple as that, the nighttime one is gonna of course have some, you don't see it much with the black, but when I put the white highlights in a bright, uh, cloud, uh, sorry, not cloud, wave crashing, you'll, it'll lighten it up. And again, this is a test on these dark guys. I don't, not sure what I was, was buying them for, but I figured I'd try them for something. But now you can see, you can take a little bit of your light and really lighten that water up. And maybe we will put a moon, uh, we have that big full moon coming tonight. Maybe we'll put a moon on there and give a little reflection on the water. And all of this blends and works this way because I'm working wet and wet, a little bit fast so that I have that time to blend. Let me wash that dark color out for a minute. I wanna fix a little bit of, this little guy got a little bit of the green blue on there. I'm just gonna wipe that off with my brush. And I can take a tiny bit of the sky color that we were using to touch that up if we need to. Although I'm gonna put some more clouds on there so I will address that little green bit then. Okay, we are going to do a little bit of sand on a couple of these. And I like to use this gold, it's like a golden okra, uh, yellow okra. 
If you don't have that color in the bottle, you can certainly take a tiny bit of brown, a speck of red, mix it with your yellow and get this color. But I like this color mixed with some white from my sand color. If it's too bright yellow, sometimes I add a teensy bit of brown, but it's a nice sand color. And there's a little technique I'm gonna to use to, and it's gonna be tiny, to write in the sand here. So I am going to give myself a good bit of the sand there, the beach. Now let's quickly do my edge. Now that's just enough for this little bit of sand there. This guy will have, I think I'm gonna do that holly hot painting that I do uh, with the sand and the ocean. So that's just a little sand here is gonna go. And do a little of the bottom. Okay, and now we just fill in with some ocean water. And then we're gonna add little things like lighthouses, maybe flowers, waves. We'll detail those clouds. But we do need a little ocean. And again, it's just the two colors mixed. And this little guy needs some. Anyone have some trips to the beach planned? My favorite place to be. I'm here on the southern coast of Maine today, and like I said, on Sunday, um, it was very windy at the beach, and the waves were enormous. I'll have to put up some of the videos on the page. So here we have where the sand and the ocean meet, and it's not gonna be a harsh line like that. I want it to blend and look like the water's coming up on the shore. I'm gonna just take a little water on my, on my brush there, just a little bit, and these colors are a little bit wet. Can you see how just a little water on the brush there is gonna soften and blend? I'm working in the water here. I'll bring it down over the sand and it's so watery that it just looks like a nice little blend. And all it is is just taking the two colors where they meet and just putting some water on my brush. You can have it as subtle or as, or as uh, bold as you want coming on. I'm gonna put a few little waves there after so that works for me. And a little more, this, this little one's going to have just a little strip of ocean and it's going to be peeking in between some hollyhocks that are growing at the beach. So we'll just do this. It's only going to be about here. And I am going to do that same sort of blend that we just did so you can see that again. And I'll show you another way to do it if, if you need to uh, want to see a different, different technique. These little guys, sometimes they get a straight line I need to just put my painting sideways or upside down or something sometimes just to get that line. Now, if you're doing these little paintings at home and, and you don't want to freehand it, you can certainly use a pencil or a piece of chalk or something to sketch on just your horizon lines and your, and your, your, your line where your sand might be. I'm gonna mix a tiny bit of white here and there. So what you can also do, if you wanted to just dry your brush off completely and just with your dry brush soften that, the, the um, sand color is a little wet still so you can get a blend like that too very softly if you're doing a big painting and this all dries in the meantime just re-wet a little watercolor re-wet a little sand color dry brush in between and you'll get that soft blend okay i'm going to go back and address the clouds now not this guy because it's a night sky i'm going to use my little my little stiffer brush. I like these bristle brush. Hey King, I like to do my clouds always, whether it's this brush or, or this one, I just take a little white in the corner of my brush. Just on the corner, I tap some of that paint off. Less is more, I would rather sometimes have just a little bit of paint and have to go over it a couple times. So for instance, I've got the paint to the top of the cloud. The top of the cloud is where I want a nice harsh edge. And underneath, I always blend it back. This is gonna be sort of a bigger cloud there. I don't fuss with them. I don't worry about them too much. I don't keep going over them. That is good enough for that little spot. A little more white. Tap it off and maybe I'll have, and I always start with a bubble. Half, little half a bubble. A couple more little bubbles straight out. If I need to, I take the dry brush after and just soften in here. And if you get a nice soft blend here, right just off into the background, you can always go and take and make another little cloud right in front. Give yourself some space so you've got like a shadow behind there and vary the shape a little bit. I go back again if I want to darken things. Lots of times your crisp edges sink into the paint a little bit and you might want them a little brighter. You can go back and do that. And then again, like I said, sometimes it could just be just a little streak like this one. So this guy here, I've 
And it's nice where you've made this little pattern to start with. Now you know where to go back. You're not going to say, oh, where are my clouds going to go? You've got it right here in your hand. You just kind of do the, the brighter to the tops, brighter, brighter, brighter. And I'm going to do both of these at once and then soften the paint on the bottom. Sometimes working fast has its advantages because you really can go back right back in and blend. And if you want, like I said, you can always put a little something in front. And that's enough, I think. We'll leave that one that way, this one here. I had a little bit of a white in here, but I might just very lightly, this time it's not gonna be as heavy as these, just very lightly. These are very light puffy clouds off in the distance. And there's not much to them. See, I can have barely any paint on the brush and I'm just sort of scraping it along there, just a little bit, nothing, hardly anything. A tip for the clouds is to try not to make them all the same exact shape. Vary them up a little bit, some bigger, some smaller, some straighter. I, I do usually always go, usually always, I always <laughs> generally go straight out on the sides. I don't really make them in, I don't really make them in a shape like you think of clouds as, you know, being like this. I don't know why, but it looks more natural to me when they sort of just fade away. You can play around with them and do them any way you like, of course. And here's what to do when you have a boo-boo. I got the dark paint all over that. I'm gonna just take a wet paper towel and wipe it off. When it's dry, I can touch it up with the sand color. Um, if you have some paint that got somewhere it shouldn't be and it won't budge, uh, rubbing alcohol will take some of that off too. Okay, so we have got a little night sky. And you know what I need to do to this guy? And I've gotta move these in the meantime is I wanted to make it a starry sky. I'm gonna to have to go over my water a little bit because I will get the uh, stars there. I just want to mostly just do this technique and show you because it's fun. It's a way to use an old toothbrush to spatter on stars or snow or on this little painting we did last night. Um, you can see I spattered some of the spray on there. I think it's a little bit too small to, to spatter spray on a tiny wave, but we can certainly do some stars in the sky and it's just a matter of getting some white paint and let me get some clean white paint because I don't want to have I don't have much room there so a tiny bit of white paint and some it's mo it's pretty watery for this technique you don't want it to drip off the painting but it's a lot of water and then your toothbrush great for snow if you're doing some snowman paintings we'll do that in July Christmas in July so I'm just going to spatter stars in the sky. Simple as that. And because I did get a little there, I'm just going to do this just to wipe. I don't want the spatters, of course, in my ocean. And you can always go back if you'd like with the, with the back end of your paintbrush, with the tip of your paintbrush, or one of these little dotting tools. If you wanted a little bit of the stars to really show up, you could take and just not a lot, but you can make a few little bigger ones here and there. something like that and we'll put that aside because that's just a little test one we're going to play around with bring our guys back here I'm going to show you even though it's teeny um, a little bit about waves waves if you look at the waves when they're breaking at the ocean this might be exaggerated but you've got that really bright limey green see-throughy color sometimes when they're turning and I love to use that color in my oceans like I said it's a little bright but I like it so I'm going to see if I have, let's see, I'll use this little brush right here, I think would be fine. And to get that color, I just mix a little of that green with some yellow. I get a nice lime green. I love that color. I use that a lot. And I just, I'm going to put it where I think I want a wave that's coming up and turning over. Here's just a little wave painting I have here too as inspiration. But I'm just going to kind of Put it in, you can't see it too well there, but I think if I add a little yellow and maybe some white to that mixture. So many times I do my mixture, but it, until you put it on the canvas, you're not gonna know how it's gonna show up and then you just adjust it on the canvas. So that's kind of gonna be a cool wave that's sort of breaking. We'll make another one since there's no sand on this, just like that. Um, these guys is hardly any there, but we'll just make a little one maybe. Maybe a little something. Now, these big waves like this would not be in the back at all. You'd never see them that far off in the ocean. These are right when they're close to you or close to the shore. And 
do a couple there. Now what I want to do is mix, like we do the clouds, soften on the bottom. These I want softer too. I'm going to just take a little bit of the ocean color that we had, or a blue, kind of a blue, whatever. Something that would be oceany, because I just want to blend the bottoms of these in with the ocean too. Just kind of, just so it's not a harsh line on the bottom. We're going to have a lot of spray and white on top of that, so it's not a big deal, but I'm just sort of blending that in. I kind of like that lighter blue there, too, actually. Nice to get a little light blue. Since I have that light blue, I really do like it. I might just put it in in a few space spots. I always go back and play around with the ocean. This has got, it's pretty blah back there, so a little bit of light blue here and there. I never take a line and put it straight across, but we can do some lighter, lighter areas here and there. I'm, I'm not really thinking about it too much. I'm sort of just putting it on there. This is just the blue with a little white. If it doesn't show up, I lighten it. Even coming up on the shore could be a little bit of lighter blue. If I was ambitious, I might paint a tiny, teeny little Adirondack chair on there. I'm not sure I'll do that. Get some of that yellowy color back, that yellowy blue color, yeah. Just play around. These are a great size canvas to just do this, just to play around with. And can you see I'm getting my thin lines? You can use your liner, of course, but I like to get my thin lines with my flat brush on the chisel edge. You can get a really nice line that way. It's pretty easy to accomplish. Just This is night, but we can get a little bit of brighter lines on there, too. That will have a little wave. We'll make a little wave on there. I just wanted to put a little more detail in the background of these guys. And you wouldn't see a wave back there, but sometimes you would see a white cap. These are just little white lines. I'm not doing them from one side to the other. I sort of put it on there, stop, start. Some are bigger, some go here and there. Very random. And you can tell, I put it on. I might not see it as well as I'd like. I go back and I'll just do it a little brighter here and there. And same here. This would not be too bright because it is night, but I could do a little, little bit of something. Um, I wanted to put a little bit of that greeny blue in here maybe to make a little wave coming over. I guess you wouldn't actually see that at night because actually at night there's no sun and the sun shining through the wave is what makes that little color. But let's just try that. We'll see what happens. We'll see what it looks like. And the fun part is going to be the little white parts that are breaking um, the spray. And so this I'm going to go with my little detail brush and just some white. When I go to do detail work, especially on these teeny canvases, if the paint's been sitting out a little bit, or even if it hasn't, I want the paint a little thinner. Sometimes I want it to flow more like ink for detail work. So if you feel your paint's a little thick on your brush, really just add a few drops of water as you go. And these say are gonna be like a little wave. I'm going on the top with the white, but I'm not gonna outline it perfectly. Watch, I'm gonna just start a little bit. I can stop and start and just kind of follow the top of that wave. I put a little pressure on the brush, it's thicker, less pressure, it's lighter, and I'm doing that, but I'm going to make some kind of curling over. So say this is going over this way, right? I'm gonna just do a little of that. This one we're gonna just make kind of like it's opening up. There sometimes is some spray, you can do some little dots and some little smush strokes. And you'll see it starts to blend sometimes in with the the color underneath and you can go back as many times as you want as it dries and just add some brighter in. I'm not following the same lines. I'm just putting it here and there. And sometimes I would take, especially on a bigger wave, but it might work on this, just a little light blue. And I do that so that when I come back with a little more bright white, it, it, it pops out a little, it has something in the background to, to um, make it pop. This looks a little, not as bright as I like, so I'm gonna just, this is how I just touch them up or just see them as they evolve, what they might need. I just made a little of that green a little brighter. And I'm just gonna stick it in there and sort of soften it. And it's not gonna be in too many places, but with the dry brush, even the same technique on a tiny brush like this, I dry the brush off 
and I just soften that. And I'm gonna let it sit a minute because I'm gonna go back and add brighter whites, but let's do the same thing to these little waves. Let's just get that white back. Just sort of outline on the top, wishy-washy here and there, not perfect strokes, just Look at the ocean, study the waves when you're there and you'll see them, they're all, every single one of them is different and they're never gonna all be the same. So this can be curling over this way. This could be a little bit of the same. Some could just be the little white lines because they're just a little further out and you don't see what's going on. This guy is just a little thin one here. We're just gonna do a little of that. And while we're here, we can do some little ones like this. They'll really pop on that nighttime one too, which is kind of cool. Here, this is a little bigger here. I'm gonna, so I'm just really using the little dashes and dots and little lines, but not a solid line, like outlined. There's a little bit of something there. And I give it just sort of almost a little outline on the top, and then I come back and make it either curling over or just a little bit of extra froth. They're teeny, but you can almost get like some little dots if it's going to be like that. And we will throw a little of that light blue color, just a little something in some of them here and there. And you'll see later how the white will really show up on top. If you think you want to lighten up underneath anything, this one I think we could do with a little bit of the light. And it's that just green and yellow, but adding that white is going to make it pop a little bit for us here you want it a little brighter just a little something there if it needs to dry off your brush and just smudge it there put a little of that in here and there too it could almost be like a little here just a little of that color let's try our nighttime guy over here same same kind of thing we're gonna make I won't brighten that one underneath at all but I think I like that just as a night sky without the moon or anything. Maybe on the other uh, dark ones I have, maybe I'll do something with the moon. But I'm, I'm liking this just as a little beach scene. I'm going to put another wave back there. I do always keep a paper towel in my hand because I'm always drying. I'm using a dry brush a lot, so I will just you know, dry the brush off as I go. I don't want a lot of water in that brush when I'm painting. And then we'll do a little. And since this is so dark, let's do a little more of just something a little brighter. Okay. Now you can see these have dried. We've lost our white a little bit, sort of sunken in the, in the back. Now you can go in and, and not everywhere, but here and there, just give it a nice bright highlight. little waves. Sometimes when it's coming up on the sand like that, I'm taking the white and just watering it down a little bit and it kind of comes right up on the sand. So same here, a little bit of some dots, some spray. And sometimes, you know, the water can come up again. It can go this way. It's kind of all, use your imagination almost once you start. And just look at it. Step away sometimes, even from these little guys, step away, kind of look from a distance, and it will help because that's where the viewer will be. They're not going to be looking at it that close and, and worrying about something's off. They're going to be looking at it from a distance, and all they're going to see is kind of a little cool, um, a little cool painting. I think this one here, I'm going to wet the, some watery white and just kind of make it come up on the shore a little. Okay, so let's add some details now to these guys. This one I might leave just as a little ocean scene, although if I do, I need just a little more spray here, just a little something brighter. And then this one I think might be done. That's what we'll put there. Okay, I was going to do a little lighthouse like we did on our painting last night on this one. So we would need a little bit of something for that lighthouse to sit on. And so maybe we'll bring in a little bit right over here. It's gonna be like some rocks, say. I don't know if the lighthouse would be that close to the beach, but you know what, who cares? We're gonna just do that so I can show you how to do the rocks. 
I just did them in black to start. Uh, this guy, we were going to put some hollyhocks growing up on the side, which are fun. And for that also, just a very dark green, almost black, but just green and some black. Maybe a little yellow. I just want a very dark green. And it's just it's gonna be growing on the side here. Even that's a little too bright. I wanna start pretty dark to begin with. When it dark, when it dries, then we'll put that light green and, and a lighter green and that will really make it pop. Lots of times I will start things extra dark so that the lighter colors on top really pop when it's time. So these guys are just gonna be kind of some just little hollyhocks that are going up here. And I'll show you a quick little way to do flowers. So we'll just let that dry now. And so little rocks. We're not gonna fuss with them too much. We got some black there. I'm taking just some. Actually, you know what? A square brush would work well. I have a little tiny square brush. I have a couple of little tiny square brushes. And because that was all be almost the shape of a little rock, so it's kind of fun to use those little guys. And I'm gonna take just some brown now. And I'm just gonna lay it here and there. You can't really see it, I know that, but I, I want just very subtle, starting to add colors. I might just take a little bit of gray now. So I'm gonna take a little black and a little white. Just a variety of colors on there, a little bit of a gray. And again, I'm just gonna kinda of lay them on. And we're gonna let this dry now. And then when it's dry, we can really get a little bit more texture of those little rocks. White lighthouse, we'll just do a little white lighthouse with some red stripes. And again, because we're working so teeny and we've got this little square brush, I'm going to just use this as my lighthouse because I can almost just do this. They're a little wider at the bottom, so let's just shape that a bit. then it will need a second coat. The white is pretty transparent, but we'll let it dry. And for the top of the little lighthouses, I just very lightly with a tiny bit of white, I just do this. It's not gonna show up much because we have a cloud, but I want it to be like the little glass area where the bit of a light is. So we'll take a little tiny bit of yellow, maybe just put that in there. And the tippy top of those guys just gets a little hat. It will be something like this, just a little black. Just a little black triangle hat, right? A little dot on the top. It gets a little bit of a fancy thing up here, a little bit of a, what you call it? And I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll add brighter white and some yellow. Oh, you know what I wanted to do is write something in the sand. Let's do that here. If you want a technique which is cool and you want to write the name of your beach, my beach here is Drake's Island, so I'm taking just that goldy color again. And I'm gonna keep it kind of watered down. And I'm going to write it kind of rough, like it would be written in the sand a little bit. Do this in a light brownie color too. So we'll just write Drake's Island. If it was a bigger canvas, I would do this a little more wiggly so it looks like somebody wrote it in the sand. That's a little dark. Let's keep it watered down. In this part, if you wanted to do it and you weren't comfortable just painting it right on, just use a little piece of chalk because that way you can put it on and it erases it right really easy. So that's just kind of with the watery paint. Just got a little heavier, but that's okay. We can tone it down after. And this guy is great. They're drying so quickly. So we'll go back here and with our little square brush, I'm going to do a little bit of a light gray. And why I wanted it to dry and I can show you on the bigger painting because it makes more sense. These are very easy, quick. We just did them with the gray and white and you can see the texture of the canvas almost, which makes it look rock-like. It's not realistic and perfectly like a real rock, but it, to, to our eye, it's a fun little whimsical painting. It, it works. 
going to take just some white. And, and I'm not doing them all built up like a stone wall, although if you were doing a stone wall, you could do it that way, but I'm just making them at different angles. I lost a bit of the black there, so I'm going to leave that and maybe just take a little black, get it back in the background here, almost kind of make some rock shapes. And I think I'll give it one more highlight again after, but that's that. And I got a little bit of a boo-boo here, so we'll just kind of... And actually, that would kind of maybe be a shadow with that, that rocks. So I'll take some of that gold maybe and just put it here, and it kind of gives it a little bit of a shadow. Again, I don't think the lighthouse would be sitting like that close on the beach, but just for the purpose of showing you how to do a little lighthouse, it certainly works. Let's just make this a little brighter. will give it some red stripes, a little door, maybe some windows. What do you think? Do you think this needs the moon? I think I can't. I'm going back and forth. Tell me what you think. If you think it needs a little moonlight, um, we are getting that big full moon tonight. So we could put a little boat on this one back there. A little sailboat's pretty easy. It's just a, a little triangle, right? A little triangle or a sail. And then one in the front that's more this shape. doesn't need much detail because it's so little and so far away. I take some brown and make just a little boat. And it doesn't show up real well out there, so I add a little bit of white to my brown. So I want a more of a beigey color. I don't want it to be white, but I want to show up. And then I am going to do a little red flag. And to give it something to sit on, we're going to just take a little white and make a little trail like it's a little bit of something break in there and then a little there. Cute little boat. You know, you could even do tiny ones off in the distance, little tiny bits of things. I just don't like to do one middle, big in the middle, and a little red flag. Barely there, barely there. But they're having a little race out there on the ocean today. So that could be that. This guy will go back and add our red stripes too. So my paint is getting a little dry there. So I just, and I curve them because the right lighthouse is rounded. So I do curve my blocks. That might be still a little wet. It's really coming out a little pink, but that paint is draggy. Let me use this other red. The other red's a little bright, but it will do. I don't want it that curved. Okay, so I'm a little straighter. And again, feel free to draw these in with your pencil if you want or your, or your chalk. Typical little New England lighthouse. Okay, there. And the little glassy area on the top, I just give it a little line so we know where it ends there. And then you could just do the tiniest little window and door if you want, tiny little window here. They're just little rectangles and you can certainly just do a little door there if you want it. There, another one kind of done. I don't think you need much more on these little guys at all. I do sometimes very lightly with the goldy color, not yellow so much as the goldy color, really super light, super watered down. If you want a little bit of a, like a little bit, I'm gonna add white to that. I don't want it even to be that yellow. A little sunshine in your um, clouds. That's a little bright, but. Um, it just looks like some of the sunlight's hitting the clouds. It's kind of cool. I don't want it that bright, so I'm gonna go back over and just tone it down a little bit. But a little bit in the clouds is kind of nice here and there. Here, I'll show you again, because that was just a little bright. I've got a very tiny bit of yellow here. Just, I, and I don't do it everywhere. I just touch it here and there. I think I goofed up this little thing. Let me just fix my little bit here. I have my readers on, but honestly, I think lately I need readers for my readers to see this little fine detail. I must have kind of smudged that. There, and I'm going to just give it a little window. Okay, go back to, these guys are pretty much done. 
deciding about a moon. I somehow want a moon there. Let's see. I do these quick little whimsical moons sometimes. They're so simple, but it's on a dark background. Yellow is so transparent, it will never show up. So what I do is I take my white, I, I plunk it down and just kind of spiral it. Cause I like the way it will get kind of light on the edge. And when that dries, I will put the yellow on top. We'll also need a little reflection for that. So same thing with the yellow, it will kind of be hard to do. So I'm gonna just kind of lightly where that reflection might be, I put a little white. You guys are all done, you guys are all done. That's, it's like I'm a little, get, you know, the games with all the puzzles that the pieces slide around. If this was much bigger, I'd put a lot of detail into the sand, writing in the sand. But what I'm gonna do is mix up a, the sand color again, but lighter than that it is, almost white maybe, pretty light. Because if it, something was written in the sand and indented, it would be darker, and then around the letters are a little white, lighter. I think I might have to use white because it's just not gonna show. So all around, roughly around your letters, just do a little bit of an outline. And this is so teeny, you don't have to be super duper careful and do it. I just want to make it look a little more like it's written in the sand. It's on the inside and the out. You're kind of outlining the letters, really. And if it was bigger, I would, I would kind of just do it kind of wiggly. I'll water that down a bit because it has been sitting there and it is a little trickier. almost I'm gonna go and, and put a little bit of just the brown that we had here and I'm gonna water it down because I think the inside would be a little bit more that color so it's just a very watery brown I'm very lightly putting over the letters I've got a little lighter outline around them again this is teeny so it's not gonna be as detailed as a, as a big painting but on a big painting if you want to do this technique it really looks nice very watered down brown still it's going to be kind of wiggly on the outside of the light that we did. And we'll do a big painting like that sometime so you can get the idea of it. So it almost is supposed to look like someone wrote it in the sand. And after I'm all done and it's dry, I sometimes streak a little sand over it to make it look a little bit more sunken in and natural. But it's just kind of that way to start. Um, and I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. Okay, so what do you think? These guys I think we can call done. You could sign your name on the bottom. You could do that with a with your fine brush with watered down paint or with a little paint marker. The paint markers are pretty cool. They are, these are really fine ones, but you could get wider ones. The Posca ones are, are nice, um, there's different sizes, and these are Pintar. And they actually have paint inside. So you shake it up to get the paint mixed up and then you can just really write pretty small and it's a lot easier than with a brush. You can barely read that, but that's my, gonna be what my signature is gonna be. Or you can certainly write your signature on the side or the bottom. And I love these pins come in all different colors. So little details that you wanna add are great. Oh, you know what we didn't do is our, um, our flowers here too. So those are the little markers. We'll play around with that. It's a little, it's a little hard to read because it's such a tiny thing. I don't know if I should have worried about that, but let's do the flowers here, uh, the leaves and then the flowers. So I've got my dark, almost black green. Then I make a lighter shades and lighter shades. And like I said, when you go on sometimes, especially with yellow, you don't see it. So we add a little tiny bit of white to lighten it up. And I'm just gonna put some random little leaf shapes here because the flowers are going on top, but we want a little bit of something in the back. And these little uh, hollyhock stems, and again, I go back as many times as I have to, lighter and lighter. These are going to have some little leaves off them too. Do some on that really light, but some on there, especially on the stems up here. I want it to be a little darker, just a regular, a little bit of a green there. And again, we're going to go back now and put the flowers on there. Little quick way to do flowers. 
Let that dry a second. Let's put, and that's still a little wet. We're gonna put our yellow on the moon when we can. Um, these guys I'm just looking at, kind of glancing at all of them and just a little brighter on the sails there. This could even have a teeny little highlight on the top there. Could even have a little highlight on the side. Oh, and the rocks we were gonna to touch up a little lighter. Just with white, my little square brush, I'm taking most of the paint off. And I'm just gonna make a few rocks that are brighter. And that is good for that, I think. Yeah, you can see they're going every which way. They're not perfect. And these guys, I'm gonna try brushing a little of that sand color over the writing. I'm not loving that. I can always paint it out completely if I wanted to. But if it's written in the sand, it would be a little bit lighter. I'm not really liking that. I'm not liking that really at all. We'll get it in the... Sometimes I look at it in the camera and it's a better view. Another tip, if you are, something's wonky, something's bothering you on a painting, look at it um, in a mirror or take a picture of it and, and you can really sometimes, whatever might be wrong sometimes just jumps right out at you at that point. All right, little flowers. Super simple and you can do them big as well. And we kind of have some a little bit like that on this painting with these little beach roses, which these could even be, if they weren't such tall stems, be beach roses. I'm going to start with my red, and I sometimes want it a little darker than what I have to start with. I might take a tiny bit of black or blue. I want more of a maroon to start. I'm going to do that. I'm gonna water it down because it's pretty thick from sitting here on my palette. And really, they're just little blobs they're not perfect circles. They're smaller or almost buds at the top here. And then they get a little bigger as they go down, more as hollyhocks. They could be half on, half on. They're not any particular way. I just sort of get the color on there to start. And again, any comments or any questions, just put them in the comments because I do have that up. Uh, even after this is recorded, if you have anything, just message me or leave a comment and I'm happy to help you out with anything. So there I have the little base of just the maroony colored flowers. And then I take just some white. And again, I'm working kind of quick while these are wet, which is uh, so that it mixes in and makes it a little pink sometimes. So um, because these are teeny, all I'm doing is taking a little of that white and sort of going around the outside edge of the flower. If I can, I leave it darker in the middle. If you look on the page, you will find this painting as like a 16 by 20, it's a good size. But I thought, wouldn't it be fun to take some of these paintings and just paint some tiny? I'm almost just dabbing on some of them, these little buds. Some of them can just be with the red. On the big painting, you'd have a little more detail. And on the big one, I put more of a dark center and some yellow dots. It's, I don't think we need that dark center, but if you want to take a little yellow, mix it with white, because otherwise it's never gonna show up. You need to get it a little more opaque by adding white. Just a little dot or so in the centers of these guys, a little bit of yellow. Again, it's hardly gonna show up, but it does add a little something, something to them. All right, let me play around with this little writing and if, if I like it, I'll leave it. If not, I may paint that over afterwards, but add a little bit of brown with that real watery brown. Let me just try again in the middle. Yeah, maybe it was just the, I didn't really care for the goldy look of that. See, out of six of these, not bad odds that one's coming out kind of eh, but I'll play around with that later. Let's, let's do the little moon here and then we can wrap it up. I'm gonna mix a little white still with that moon. I don't want it too, too bright. 
And I'm just basically gonna plunk my brush in the middle again and just spiral it out. And I'm gonna go out even further so that, can you see how the, the paint wears off and it gets like a little feathery look? And then we can do a little highlight here on the water and that's everything. So what do you think? Not bad, six little paintings and just a, oh no, we, sorry, we have five, not five, six, five. Oh, let's put them on a little easel and see how that looks. It'd be kind of cool. I don't know if you can see it up that way, but I'll tip it so you can see it's on the little easels. Now, how cute is that? Little gift. You could certainly just write with the marker on there uh, the name of your beach that you like and instead of pretending to write it in the sand, which didn't work out great, but it's a thought. And you can see the bigger paintings in the photo album on the page with the writing, which it looks a little better. So it was fun. I've been dying to do those, so I thought, why not do it right here with you guys watching? So, okay. Have a great afternoon. Nice to see you guys.